Hey guys, welcome to another one of our videos. I'm Luan, and this is the Proton. Uh, today we're doing uh, a device, uh, a rebuildable dripping atomizer from realvapes.co.uk. Uh, thank you very much to uh, for sending this down. We're not sure if the name's top on, but. We're English and ignorant. Fortunately, <laughs> uh, everyone is. Yeah, what are we doing today? Today, what we are doing is <laughs> um, the Smock Scar. Um, RDA from realvapes.co.uk. Uh, um, this is a 100% genuine smock one. It does sound like it's 100%. Ain't no clone. clone. Um, yeah, yeah, basically smock RDA. Um, $8.99, mm. uh, which is a very good price for this. Um, we've seen it a few places, and I've actually been fighting buying one of these because I really like the idea um, for a while. And yeah, this is the cheapest place we've seen it, and then they sent this one through. So it's Wicked. We it's try uh, it. an 18 mil uh, dripper, and it's uh, 30, 33 mil height. So indeed, we'll take it out of the bag quickly. Um, that is what you're going to get, guys. Okay, that is your smock RDA. You've got your oh sorry, your smock RDA to scar. Smock um, scar. scar RDA, and um, obviously scar will tell you what the basically that's what you're paying for the scar there, um, which is your scars. Um, do you want to pull this open or should we? Yeah, yeah. we should pull this open. Uh, I'll show you. It does come pre-built. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the core resistance because I haven't actually looked at it. I'm so sorry. I'd imagine though that it's going to be either a one or a two. Um, I'm sure the worm will test it. And that's your insides there. It's a dual core obviously guys. It is um, a very, very busy place in there with all that wick. There is tons of wick in there. Um, Absolutely tons. Very briefly, the... Um, those of you guys have watched our DDA video, um, the, the DDA DDA Mini um, from Totally Wicked, they are actually smock RBAs, RDAs, sorry, um, and the RDA Mini uh, just obviously re relabeled for Totally Wicked. Just going to check um, the resistance of the weight comes with, guys. This is pretty much the same thing, um, and like the uh, DDA and the DDA Mini or the RDA, RDA from Smock. Um, you've got your air feed in the side from the body going under in between two O-rings and then it comes up for a channel underneath the coil. Um, obviously being a dual coil you think well you need two of them. It's wicked because you've got two. Um, basically you've got one air feed through the body and it goes up to two air channels, one underneath each coil uh, which is awesome. You have got three posts in there as well guys. Um, we're actually going to test this. What we're running on? It's 2.1 ohms. It comes 2.1 ohms. Um, so I assume they come around about 2 ohms. 2 ohm coil, cool, yeah. We're going to test this with the actual coils that are in it because they, they actually look like pretty reasonable coils. We have a little vape. I imagine we're going to pull this out and rewick it for you anyway, but we want to test it with what it comes with because this is what you're going to get. Um, if you buy it, and no doubt you'll end up using it uh, standard straight away anyway, just because the coils that are in there are actually pretty presentable coils. So it does sound the site that. Fits well on ego battery, so I've just got an ego battery with a cone here that I'm just going to slap it on and uh, just see how it looks. Actually, yes, with the cone, that is actually flush. Very nice. So there you go. Um, the materials used, uh, the body, the yeah, our body is to me, it's, it's a nice tight fit on here because I can't actually get get it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I'm struggling to find a device that you would connect on for my own test. Which is your device? It's my device as well, than the actual right. release. That body is stainless steel. I don't know what you're saying, but to me, there's no way that's that not stainless steel. That is definitely stainless steel. steel. Um, the, the bottom section, yes. uh, I'd imagine chrome plated, chrome, plated, chrome plated brass. It's got a bit of weight to it, but. Not as much as the body. No. Um, I'd, I'd imagine we've got chrome plate bra brass on the bottom. So we've got the juice. I'll prime this while we're here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, your body is um, stainless steel. We guess uh, we're pretty sure it is. And the the base probably chrome plate brass. Um, but you don't see the base. The body covers it. The only bit you may see is just the lip of uh, where uh, the the um, outer ring is that supports the outer ring, so you can see your body on. Um, so for it's not. For that amount of stainless steel, because it is a decent chunk, it's a fairly weighty little dripper for the size. Um, not bad at all for sort of eight pound ninety nine. Um, again, the, the DDA it's exactly the same setup, but you've got two air channels, you've got three posts to make obviously dual coiling a hell of a lot easier, um, which is awesome. Yeah, 
Yeah. We we liked the um, the Smock RDA or the Totally Wicked DDA. We really liked that. In fact, it was the first dripper we bought um, and absolutely loved it. We still have two each. Uh, they do get used now and again. There are drippers out there that we prefer on flavour, but they still are very very good drippers. So with this, it looks like on this guys we've got like six one mil wicks in, on each side here. Might be one. There might be point eight or something. Yeah, but they're about one. So. Um, but this is uh, just taking about half a mil juice, so on the wick. So, I mean, you, it's going to be sort of pretty standard once you've got your wicks primed as the amount you can drip into it. Um, so I'd imagine you're looking sort of eight to ten drops at oh, a time. Get juice everywhere. Okay. Getting with with the the um, the scar similar to the DDA, you've got the wicks come off either side, and on the DDA or the RDA, you tend to slide the body over and pop on. But because you've got wicks both sides, um, that could be. A wee bit complicated. Um, expect juicy fingers. Expect juicy fingers. There you go. But like I say, it's two ohms. We are going to actually run this. Would you want to run it? Do you want to run it on the box? Yeah, run it on the box. Um, right on the box. We are going to run this standard just to see how we get on. Basically, um, again, it's connecting. Yeah, two point one. Don't, I don't doubt we will put our own coil in this coil. Just one to show you a rear with uh, two because we always prefer our own coils. <laughs> That's actually very tight. Very tight drip. Well, drip tip. Well. Really? Let's have a look. Streaming out on that one. Well, that's going straight in. That one's going straight in? Cool. That's going straight in. Oh, that is quite, quite tight on the 510. Don't remember, we'll go in. That's in there solid. Once it's in, it will pull out nice and easy, but. Getting the bastard in. Getting it in. A little bit tight. Can we stick that over moment? Can we go first? Yeah, we'll go first. Right. Obviously, it's brand new cool, so it's going to take a little while, a few minutes to bed in, I'd imagine. But we'll have a go. What are you doing? Just testing the draw. Did you line up the air hole? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, there is um, a hole in the base between the air rings, a little hole, and there's one this uh, air hole uh, in the body that you line up with that hole. We weren't sure whether it's going to come with two air holes in the body and two air holes in the um, base for you to have dual channel, um, but it's actually one that provides both channels, so it's not too bad. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> um, we we. Like the idea that this is for dual cores, you haven't got the air holes in the body. Um, we tend to find typically, although you can place your air hole, you you never get as flavourful um, and full vape as when them uh, air holes are directly underneath the core, which is why we like a lot of uh, core uh, drippers that are set up in that way. Um, A7 Zeus, DDA, all that kind of stuff. We do like those kind of drippers purely because that's how they set up. We find the temperature of the vapes nicer because it's quite a warm vape, uh, and the flavour is always good uh, when it's like that. And so is just generally the vape. Um, you have got to be aware though, if you're going to rewrite these yourselves, and even when you're placing in the uh, pre-built coils, that the air holes obviously part of the body, and if your coil is touching that, it will negative out on that air hole. So you just can make sure there's ample space between the air hole. You're looking at about three mil, I guess. Mm, yeah, I've got a six milligram juice in there, minute, guys, and um. We just previously said you've done a juice review on it and we did get no throw off of that. I'm getting a, a little bit of throw off that, but I'm assuming that's just because it's dual cores and obviously you're getting a little bit more of it through on each hit. So, But the standard core that it comes with, it's okay. It, it's, it's not bad. I mean, if you're not too keen on re wicking and you'd like to try a dual core, this one does come with an actual okay one. It's not the best. I think we will probably re wick this and it's going to perform a lot better. But the coil it comes with, it's, it's all right. The standard coil, yeah, we are. There is a bit more throat coming from this, especially from a six compared to um, an eighty that we've just done a review in. But I'd imagine part of that's down to the air hole is. I'd say about a one mil draw. The hole itself looks about one mil. I mean, when you talk about one point two, one point one, or one point three, they're very close. By eye to gauge, that is difficult. But the draw. It feels like a one will draw and we find the tighter the draw typically the harsher the throat hit. Um, the flavour of it though is pretty good actually for yeah. standard call. It's, it's not bad in any means at the moment but I think what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to stop the video here. Only we'll, twice about it, we're putting this call out. We'll, we're going to call, call out, put a lower call, lower risk call in there probably about a point six to a point eight, somewhere around there and uh, but you'll see it anyway guys so mm. uh, yeah, we're probably going to go down to that in a second if you've got anything else to add. No, let's do it now because we can show you the, we can show you this up close then properly yeah. um, and have a little chat about it down there and then we can come back up to us with one of the coils that we put in it. Just a, a, a lot of you guys, if you're looking at this, is one of the first drippers or a progression from a, uh, an RDA from Smog or a DDA, Potato like Wicked, whatever you're looking at it as. Um, you may still be at the stage where you're not 
super comfortable with wrapping around calls, and even if you are, you may not have dual called before. Um, so this may not be what you're going to do when you first get it, but the the core in there is, is adequate. It's not a bad core compared to clear and and stuff. Yeah. It's knocking them off, but we know we can get better at this device and we want to. So yeah. that's what we're going to do. We're going to go down. We'll show you up close and personal. Uh, we'll re-wick it and then we'll come back up and show you and tell you exactly what this device is really about. Um, so yeah, we'll do it now. All right, guys. This is the close-up of the. Uh, Smock scar, um, as you can see, that's where you get your name from. You've got the scars on the outside. Uh, I ring here, not entirely sure what that's for, and obviously, you've got your 510. Hopefully, you like a new board. Um, I'll just pop this off, I'll show you inside very briefly. Um, you've got your free post section there, okay? So, it's very similar to the RDA or the DDA, but obviously, you've got an extra negative. Um, holes in the posts around the top as normal. You have got a well in here, hopefully you can make that out. Um, and you've also, like we said, you've got your two air feed or air holes there, air channels, whatever you want to call them. But that's what they are, so one underneath each core, which is pretty cool. Held in double O-rings uh, and you have got your air hole for your air feed just there. Okay, so you've got your one in your body there. It lines up with that there. It doesn't have to, but you get a, a better airflow if you do do it that way. No adjustment in the 510, unfortunately, um, but we didn't really expect any, if we're honest with you. That is what it is. Fairly simple stuff. It's a two piece assembly um, for the rewick. Well, we're going to do the rewick for you. Um, that's what we're going to do. Just make sure you can see some daylight through them. But that's not going to be something we have to worry about now because we have to wrap some coils. So, what I've got is a couple of pieces of uh, two and a half mil silica uh, and a couple of pieces of 30 gauge canthol. Okay, so we are going to double over. Um, it's a pretty standard procedure, hopefully, being dual calls. Um, <laughs> we're going to go for six reps on these. Uh, I'm aiming for like a 0.8 cord, if I'm honest with you. That's where we like to vape, but we never know what's going to happen. Um, you want to make these coils as close to each other as possible. Um, for consistency, obviously the last thing you want is your cores to be different, then one's going to be lighting sort of, or, or, or heating quicker than uh, the other, which is not what you want at all. Not unless you don't want a good faith anyway guys, uh, you've got to make sure these cores are burning at the same sort of quickness and heat, just to get a better vape out of the actual device. So It's not just that, but one, one side will dry up quicker than the other, um, so you're going to have to drip. Uh, more on one side than you will on the other, which is just a pain. So one side will be a nice, lovely, saturated vape, and the other side will not be. Okay, that is coil one finished. Um, as I said, guys, as I said in many re videos, I don't worry too much about coil space, and it's not bad, but I don't worry too much about it until it's actually in the device because we're going to be pulling it about, God knows what else. Um, so I might as well get them in and then worry about it once it's in there. Uh, it's a rinse and repeat process, it's exactly the same on the other side. Just get it in and then start wrapping your coils. Uh, as we're going six turns, guys, on these 30 gauge. Um, as we said before, make sure when it comes to um, dual coiling, you remember that you're going to be halving the resistance of these coils and not doubling it. So just be aware of that. All right, if you're going for a one ohm, you want two two ohms, not two half ohms. So you're going to end up with a very very low resistance coil, um, which is lovely, but not what you're after. So there you go, um, that is coil number two, there you go focus, again guys spacing will be sorted out in the device, um, it's fairly, to be honest with you, it's a, it's a familiar setup now or nowadays, um, there's quite a few of these dual core drippers sort of floating about now, so all you want to do is you've got your two legs from this coil, you've got your positive in the middle and your negative on either side, one leg from one core goes on the outside and one goes in the middle. You should have two legs in the middle and one on either side. Let me just... Do, do, do. Sorry guys if I do go out a shot a little bit. These holes are... They've not... It would have been nice had they increased the size of the hole from the um, DDA or the RDA, uh, Smock RDA. They're not they're the same size as the RDA, but you've got to get two wires through that middle one or two pieces of camp through that middle one. It would have been nice just to see them a little bit bigger to make your life fractionally easier. It's not essential, it can be done, but that is what it is. Uh, same as the, the RDA video, guys. Um, 
try and make one less short than the other to make it easier to fit through uh, and also I, I bend them down put this coil in or I then put this coil in so it's in place then bring this one over uh, it makes I, f I find for me it makes it easier for, for everyone may not but for me that's how I find is easiest to do it and I then pull these two legs up once the first one's in place pull this one in and pull them ones up or to the side if you need to differentiate between the coils wrap that negative around this post pull this one in a little bit and wrap that one around that post that's your two negatives sorted pull this a positive in slightly once around and pull this side positive slightly and once around sorry guys if I went off camera a little bit there but that is kind of where we end up so far um, I'll then tighten down the nuts on the top of all of them it doesn't matter what you do this in obviously it's just as long as they're all tightened down um, what I tend to do because you've got cables and, and well, sorry cables but can throw in the way what I tend to do is um, get them quite tight to start with I will then snip um, the can throw and I will snip on this and not uh, twist because twisting it can undo the can throw from the uh, post it can be a little bit of a pain um, it's nothing major, we usually have snips out for the silica anyway but not everyone does so just bear that in mind, you may have to get some snips that are getting there close otherwise you're going to leave legs hanging off of your posts right we've got to this stage now we've got two coils in there, they're fairly similar, both six wrap um, so now I am going to work on spacing very slightly you want to make sure guys that there is a gap between your coil and your air hole otherwise you're going to negative out on your air hole um, so what I do is literally just sort of get me a micro screwdriver that I pinched off the worm um, and make sure they're as evenly spaced as I can get them on either side. Some to, to be honest, sometimes some devices I find that they have to be exactly the same, evenly spaced. Other times I think, oh, I'll push me like and have a little test fire and they go boom straight away uh, and you kind of get lucky. But what you're looking for is an even glow on both sides. Um, so I'm going to attach this to a device, I'll see it's a Segeli 20, a review is coming guys, attach it to a device, give it a little screw down, give it a fire, hopefully not have to tinker too much. So let's see where we sit, mm, stuff is starting to happen, these have been, these have been um, pre-flamed, so... Is it a fully charged battery? It is a brand new battery, just pulled it off the charger so there is a little bit of tinkering involved. There always is with dual coils, um, just because you, with one it's bad enough if you're trying to get hotspots out, but with jewels it seems that you have got to work a little bit more for it. Like treble. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, you can see there the glow's there. We've got a fairly even glow. Um, the coil on whew, one side is slightly off, not by loads though. So we'll have a little address and see if we can. Uh, can't sort that out. Right, there we go. And that's what you want, guys. You want it to be lighting evenly, which is what we're getting. So that's wicked. Um, right, what I'm going to do to start with, I'm going to snip off these ends that are just sort of slightly between the body. They're not needed um, in any way, shape, or form. So take them back to there. All right that was very close to the coil sorry guys I know I've gone off camera but I'm having to inspect here um, there's nothing wrong with that but I'm just going to move it over slightly just to make sure I'm not going to run into any problems um, now with uh, this device you've <laughs> the coils are like the, like the DDA where you kind of do that and put the body over but it's got a well um, so it'd be nice if we could get them coils in that well if we're honest it's just this there's not a lot of room for error so i think what we're going to do is do the way they've said so they did it but we're going to make these coils shorter uh, to make it easier to get the body back on like so um which is lovely jubbly stuff the only problem with doing this guys is obviously you just have to drip a little bit more often so it's not like a major deal but it is going to have to be dripped a little bit more often i mean you have you have got a decent size well in there so it's not too bad because you can drip, although you haven't got wicks anywhere, you can drip into the well, have a little ring round um, and the juice will get onto them wicks. And to be honest with you, there's still a decent amount of wick in there. It's not like there's not enough wick, it's just 
<laughs> not as much as you'd like, not as much as the standard ones have. Cause I mean, there was six pieces either side, and there was a lot of it, like the DDA, it's just like two DDA wicks, basically. Um, so, it's one of those ones, guys. Uh, so, what I'm going to do, guys, we'll basically slap the body on, we'll throw a bit of juice in there, come back up to us, and we'll have a nice little vape. Um, and we'll have a chat about this now that we've got one of, uh, one of my wicks in it. So, yeah, see you in a sec. Hi guys, welcome back up. Um, obviously you can see that change of tops and all kinds of manner of things. Stars in their eyes. It's been a couple of days, we had a little bit of issues with the coils. It wasn't going right, we was both getting the ump. So it's best to put it down for a few days basically. And um, it's been, what has it been? About a week? Nearly a week? Three days. Has it been three days? No, I don't think that's been three days. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That'll be three days. Schooling lessons from the minge. Um, right. Yes, we did, well, basically, what you saw on camera was the fourth attempt um, at me coiling it. Um, there was a few before that, and it just wasn't vibing, it just wasn't in that zone that I wanted it in. Um, I was getting the hump um, after recording what you've just seen. Uh, we tried it, it just wasn't performing like it should. So, I did get a bitch fit going on. And then Worm had a go, didn't you? Cut it, was it one or twice? Once. Worm had a go once um, and wrapped it. It was like an okay, everything was kind of going all right, uh, but the vape just was uh, was not, not where it should be. No, it wasn't where it should be. So we decided to leave it for a few days. Uh, we had stuff to do anyway. Uh, come back, had a go today, um, off camera. It's a lot easier off camera. Um, should point out, I was having a very bad re wicking week last week. It wasn't just this device, it's pretty much everything other than the Genesis tank and a K fun. Um, barring those, I just couldn't wick anything last week. I think if you're someone who wicks a lot, you'll know what that's like. Um, so, yeah, re wicked it today. It's now got two 5 wrap 30 gauge coils on 2.5 wick 0.7 ohms. Okay, that's where we are now sitting. So, we'll get that bit out of the way, no doubt we'll end up coming back onto that once we've done our flap. Um, so what we're we gonna do? We're gonna have a little vape. We're gonna show the device on me and uh, how it's performing on right now. Um, yeah, basically got this on. Uh, what is this? Uh, V3 or Sentinel clone. Obviously the scar on there. One of them nice little drip tips from your vape. Um, full battery. So I had a quick little vape whilst I was a flap. No doubt about my bitch fit. Yeah, it was. Um, basically, we we done the first call on camera. It was it was alright. That, that fourth take was the fourth take on camera, by that, the way, guys. Yeah, the, the, that was the fourth one that you actually you were actually seeing the first one. Uh, you just couldn't get an even heat. You tweak one side and then it would glow the other side, and then you tweak that side, then it would glow the other. Side. It was just not happening on that one. So you rip that one out. Then take two. It was going all right, and then he put the top on, not the coil, and then it wouldn't go again. So had to rip that one out. I think the second time I did something stupid, like when I cut the ends off of the coils. Oh yeah, you out, cut it too close. I cut it too close to the coil, one of the, one and that's why it moved the coils. Fell off yeah. of the wick, and it was just. Nope. So I pulled that out and then we went again. And was that the one that you tweaked and it just didn't work at all, did it? It was just glowing one side and not the other. It was. If, if you've dual coiled before, you know that tweaking with dual coils is a bit more difficult because you've got two things that you can need to tweak. You, it looks pretty much spot on. You tweak one thing and it throws the whole thing out of balance. Then you're tweaking both, trying to get it back. You'd be after you've started, you'd be happy with what it was before you started tweaking. Just gets to get. Sorry, that back. guys. The first call. The reason one side was heating more than the other when he was tweaking it. One was had a six rack coil, one had a five rack coil. I don't even, so, I don't even forgotten about that. It. it was on camera, I wasn't paying attention, wrapped him, and I actually accidentally unwrapped one coil, put it in, and I was like, why is this one heating so much? <laughs> the other is because that's I'm, why you couldn't get the even tweaking so, on that one. But yeah, now we're on coil. Well, then we've done my one after we put it down. It was heating evenly, it was quite nice, and then put some juice on it, and just not much, much of anything happened. It was okay to a bad standard really. Uh, what we would consider a bad standard anyway. Yeah and uh, it just, no, we, we, we tried it, we vaped it for like what, like two or three pulls each? We had like, this is not right. minutes and we could just tell something wasn't right. I mean once you're used to re-wicking and stuff, especially since I do dual coil a lot in a lot of different devices, some that are made to do it and some that aren't, you kind of, <laughs> you kind of just know when something's not quite right. So that was when I actually got the ump wasn't it and just said no that's it I'm done. Uh, the next day Worm had a go. And Wick was absolutely lovely, the, the coils were lighting brilliantly, it's just when you vaped it, something wasn't quite right. I mean, Arthur from um, 
Royal Vapes sent us in an email saying, um, just with his experiences basically, that um, if you have those coils too close to the air hole, um, the vape doesn't seem quite right, which is something that we knew anyway from um, the DDA uh, and, or the RDA, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, and also he said that if the coils are too widely spaced, the, the vape doesn't seem to give you its best either. Um, the coils weren't widely spaced, they were spaced proportionately to the posts um, on both sides. You see the rear wick, um, they're actually now slightly closer than they were then. Um, but it's one of the things, each device has its little play area. Yes, yeah, it has its little, you, you find a way to work it. I mean, I have with pretty much everything I use regularly, each one has its little kind of, it's like getting into a car that you've owned for a while. They've each got a little kind of foibles or flaws, but you kind of know your way around them. It's, and you it's learn a, to love them or hate them, and mm. you basically just got, that's the whole point of like new devices. You buy it, you try it for a little bit, the first cause. Sometimes you do hit it for first time, but the majority of the time you're just not going to. You're going to have to re a device when it's new several times before you get the best out of it. We've done that now, we've done like six, seven calls in this. Uh, the ones we wrapped were vapourable, but we just wasn't happy with them. We knew that the device wasn't giving more, and obviously we've done a third party video like three or four days ago now, and the reason we wanted to put one of our own calls in is because we knew it had more to give. Um, and we weren't happy with how much more it's given us on our own coils. We we've kind of we use enough devices to know what the difference should be between st stock coil and something you wrap yourself. We're, we're using the same wick, the same wire, so we know what we can get out of it to its full potential. And it just wasn't touching it at the time. So, but as you can see, like plenty of vapor now, and that guy's. Uh, well, yeah, that's our little catch up um, because we're we're catching ourselves up as much as we're catching you up. Um, basically. I think what we'll do is we'll get onto a few of the little nitty gritty, nitty gritty bits about the device. We'll have our little five point, and then no doubt there'll be a little chin wave on the other side of that as well, so stick around for that because um, it will be relevant, I guess. Um, but a few things to touch on first of all. Um, one of them, uh, the drip tip well at the top, for some reason, um, your loosest drip tip is the tightest in it. We don't know whether it's an O ring or whatever else. Just have to bear in mind, guys, if you've got literally one drip tip to your name, might be worth chucking a couple more on. Um, to be honest with you, the drip tips from Real Vapes, we did do a review on them. Uh, they're lovely and cheap, and to be honest, you can get one that matches. That's one of the ones that comes with it there, and it's kind of like. Um, oh, and just an update, guys, we did find out what this O ring at the top was for. Uh, they're actually bringing out a drip tip that actually fits over the top. Mm, not technically. That's oh, just, Well, because, <laughs> <laughs> because basically, this is. I'm not going to say a clone. But it is a complete knockoff in terms of look of the cyclone. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the cyclone has a drip tip at the top, and cyclone, or oh, I can't remember who makes the cyclone, is it Ant or whatever? Oh. My dear God, really poor from us today. Um, <laughs> but the cyclone has got a custom drip tip for the top to slip over the top of the O ring to sort of blend it, as well as the AFC and stuff like that go on it. Um, so that is obviously modelled after this. Whether uh, Smock will bring out our own drip tip to go onto this, I don't know. Whether the one from a. Uh, from Whoever it is that makes a cyclone, I'm so sorry. Um, really poor of me today. Um, we'll slip onto this. I don't know either, but I know that the, the drip tip costs about 20 quid yeah. um, for the cyclone. But we assume that's what it's for, but we've seen one out there for the, for the other version of this. Yeah. So they, they based it on the cyclone, um, and the cyclone's got the drip tip comes out and slips over the top. So maybe keep your eyes peeled for that. We'll let you know if we yeah. know about it. But that's what we assume it's for because that we've seen it on another device now. So indeed. Um, Quickly, the, the pull on it is tight. It's, it's not as tight as we're probably making it out to be. It's tight for us. It's tight for us. We used to, well, I'm used to about a 1.5 to 2 mil hole. He's used to like 5 mil hole. No, I, I mean, typically <laughs> what I vape has a 1.5 mil hole, but my Genesis tanks, I like a Mary, so they will be sort of 1.5 and up. So going back on something slightly tighter um, is a, a wee bit strong. It's about, I'd say equivalent to about a 1 mil air hole. So for certain people using certain devices, this is going to be quite loose for you. People using like uh, the DDA is probably about the same sort of. It's, it's a very similar that, draw to the yeah. DDA. Um, but yeah, it's just something to cover on. Um, if you like a really, really airy draw, you're not going to get it with this. Because I did actually have a look um, at the body and thought, well, if I drilled the body out slightly, um, you're still restricted by the hole that's actually in the uh, the deck or the base. So you're only going to make it so loose, and I'd imagine you're not getting much looser than that. So that is how it is, depending on what you want to do, up to you. But we're just letting you know that the, the draw is about a 1mm draw. So if you've got a stock RSST around that kind of level draw, I'd imagine. There you go. Um, should we go into a 5 point hit and we'll yeah. do our flapping on the other side of it? Uh, looks, obviously, without the actual dip tip in, it's just the actual scar on itself. I actually quite like it. It's actually not a bad looking device. It's actually, um, it's kind of, it's got its own little funky look. And it has, you know. Uh, I'm going to say it's about a 9 for me. It's quite nice. Um, looks for me, I think, 
I think some of the credit has got to go to the cyclone to be honest with you but I do like it it's my kind of thing this stainless steel blends well with a lot of um, sort of Sigini mods and that so I'm going to give it a 9 as well actually it's quite kind of quirky it's, yeah. actually, it's actually quite a nice looking little uh, piece so yeah not a 9 for me for the looks of it it's quite good yeah good uh, yeah uh, usability it's, it's, it's a dripper I mean uh, once you get used to wrapping dual cores it's not overly that hard it's just learning your own rhythm for wrapping the dual cores basically you can run this in single coil as well guys, yeah. if you choose to I don't know how that work out with the two air holes though because an air hole that far away from the coil and you can't block that feed off unless you, I don't know you just put a toothpick or something down there um, it might make the throat hit slightly harsh I, I don't know we haven't tried it but just bear that in mind if you plan on running it in single coil but obviously it is a dual coil device so we've been wrapping it as a dual coil but for usability as a dual coil device it's just learning your own tweaks about making your own dual cores and putting them in properly and getting them heating right. So it, there is a little bit of a learning curve on this device because obviously dual cores are a little bit more harder to maintain than a single core. But usability overall for me, uh, probably about a seven, just because the dual cores are a little bit harder to maintain and put in it themselves. Um, but other than that, it's just dripping and washing out. Pretty much usability in terms of uh, sort of what you've got to do to have it. Then it is it's two parts. You literally drip it. Uh, rip the coil out, wash it out and you can go again. Um, the only thing to be aware of is you've got three nuts to make sure they're tight and then when you do rinse it, barring that, there's nothing that can go wrong with this device. Um, usability for me, it's as easy, I guess, as any other dual core device. It's kind of, it's hard to say because it depends on your skill set and obviously the performance of the device is going to depend totally on what you can do with it. Um, but for me, I think usability is about an eight or a nine. Um, it's, it's for a dual core device compared to sort of your single core setups. Then they are much easier because you've got half the amount that can go wrong. You've got one coil as opposed to two to maintain, um, and you've got one coil as opposed to two to put in. But for a dual core device, yeah, it's, it's as easy as any other. It's, there's a few I can think of, and I had similar issues with those on a bad rework day like I was having the other day. So, yeah, I'm gonna give it a, an eight or a nine. There or thereabouts for a usability. Maintenance on this guy is, I mean. Um, the kind of two parts is to maintaining the actual device, just rinse it, make sure you, you tighten up those uh, actual finger thread, uh, finger nuts sort of things before you wash it, and that's pretty much all your maintenance of the actual device itself. But obviously, you've got to recoil this thing, so actually, just looking after the device on its own, it's like a 10, it's not hard at all. But when you go to putting the cores in, again, I'm going to drop it to about a 7 to about, I'm going to say 7 to 9, depending on your re wicking skills. I mean, new to rewicking dual calls, it's going to be about seven. It's going to annoy you for the first few times you do it. But if you're used to using dual calls and do them quite happily, it's going to be like a nine for you. It's going to be quite easy. So, uh, maintenance for me, in terms of the device itself, it doesn't even come into play. You've got to wash it. It's as simple as that. It's two pieces. You can't get any simpler than that. No. Um, but in general, sort of every day, once you've got your calls in there, you're good. Okay. Um, if you're used to dual coiling, you're going to be absolutely fine. I mean, we are used to dual coiling, um, and yeah, it, you you encounter devices now and again. And I think the thing is with this one, I wasn't expecting it to be a problem. That's probably why it was. Um, I get devices sometimes. I think, my dear God, um, and go and they turn out fine. But you look at this, you think this is beautifully simple. We started on an RDA, so it's literally as easy as it can be for us. We're going back to the old school. We still use RDAs now. Um, <laughs> and he just he wanted to to not do what I wanted to do. I mean, it was user error, it was totally on me. Um, but just be aware, guys, that the ones you don't expect to can catch you out. But for me, um, maintenance in general, yeah, just putting a new coil in once, uh, it will depend on how often you use it. For me, probably once every four days. For most of you, probably once every week to two weeks. But um, I'm going to give it an eight as well for you, uh, for maintenance. It's not really a lot to maintain by and putting new coils in um, so yeah it's fairly easy to do and eight for that one yeah um flavor and vapor um this is obviously going to depend on your actual wicking but the one we got in here at the moment that is working i'm going to say the vapor's probably around about about eight and a half just because you're uh, restricted by the airflow on this one it's, it's not as much as it could be if it, you had more airflow in there it just isn't um, but the flavour, the flavour is really, really good on this. It's actually quite nice. It comes through very, very strong. You've only got a small chamber in there with two coils. The air is just flowing straight past that, and you're getting pretty much all the flavour. We've tried this in other devices. The flavour we've got in this, in like uh, we've got K Farm, we've had it in, we've had it in some Carto tanks and stuff like that. And I'd say it's better than the Carto tank. You're getting more of the um, the crispness of the flavour through, uh, and it's, it's it's actually quite good. I'm gonna say it's about a nine for flavour. Um, vapor, obviously, 
bear in mind what juice you're using, guys, it can depend on that. Uh, vapor, I think you're being a little bit harsh. Um, I'm going to give Vapor a sort of, for what it is, I'm going to give it a nine and a half because compared to like the, the RDA, which effectively this is, um, with a slightly different body and an extra post, you're getting quite a bit more. Uh, like, so you've got the air channels coming up above, over, straight over them two coils, fairly small chamber, um, and it is. It's a tighter draw than what we used to. I mean, we can with certain devices just blow clouds, and other devices just it's a, you barely see it, but you get in your hit. Uh, I'm gonna give vapor like a nine and a half. For what it is, it's actually very, very, um, a very good vapor. I think off of this 50/50 juice. Um, flavor, I'm gonna give flavor a nine as well. It's actually it, it's better than a DDA or an RDA. It's better than that. Uh, there are devices out that's better than this, um, but you're looking at paying more than 8.99 for them for sure. Yeah. Um, You've got the lower ones that are nearly twice the price, and then you've got ones that are six or seven times the price easily. Some of them nearly ten times the price, um, and flavour still sort of it is keeping up. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, overall, I do quite like this device. I mean, throughout it's all these little niggles and uh, getting it to work, which was our fault, not the devices. It was ours. Uh, we just have we just seem to be having bad wicking issues at the moment. Uh, what, what can you say? It happens. Um, I'm gonna give this device a ten. I mean, I know like nothing's really hit the ten, but overall, once you get it working, it's actually a banging little dripper. It really is. I mean, it's just once you got it working, it's working, and the flavour is really nice of this. I mean, you, you think the vapor is quite good. I personally think it could be a little bit better with a bigger air hole, but it would be better with a slightly, big, a slightly bigger air hole. Sorry, yeah. I got a little bit vape tied, <laughs> but you can only expect so much. Yeah, from yeah. That, compared to like. Uh, my main thing that I would compare this to would be a DDA or an RDA. Yeah. I think it's better than that. But uh, yeah, I think it's a ten overall. I, I do actually quite like it. Otherwise, I'm be quite happy to own one of these. I'd be quite happy to pay eight ninety nine for one of these, and I wouldn't be sorry to pay that amount of money, sort of thing. Um, my overall, uh, bear in mind, it is eight ninety nine, which is uh, fantastically cheap for a, a very new product that looks as good as this one does. Um, and it is stainless steel, unlike the RDA, which is yeah. aluminium. Um, stainless steel is more expensive and it's not much more price either. Uh, my overall, I'm gonna give it, I am gonna give it a 10. I am, it, it has frustrated me at times, but it, I've been using it all this evening and it's actually a very nice little dripper. It does the job very well. Um, a few of the up points I did wanna point out very quickly is that little well, although only small, I've noticed in this eight, 10, 12 drops, 14 drops, um, and I've not had any issue. I've had it gurgle on me once and I put 15 drops in it, and obviously 15, I mean, the wicks were dry, but 15 drops is quite a lot of something this size. At, at, at RDA, you're pushing your limit, pushing your luck with eight, really. Yeah. Um, so that I, I do like. I uh, should point out, with this, I've just dripped it. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna make this out, but with this, I have actually tucked those wicks into the wall. I've not made them anywhere near as long as they are um, when they come out. It's basically two pieces, two and a half. They're only sort of about that long, okay, and then tucked around and just dipped into that well. Basically like that's that, that's your coil there, and it just basically tucks in, and that's your well, sort yeah. of thing. So it's actually just tucked in there, hold them in place, so you can quite happily pull that off, make sure you've still got juice in there if you're not sure, plonk it back on, re-drip it. Um, yeah, basically, the reason the reason I did that is because having all those loose wicks and trying to bunch them up and getting juice on the fingers, one, it annoys me, because if we, we have said several times that you can drip when you're out and about, it's not too much of a chore. When you've got a... Deal with that, it can become a chore having someone to wipe your hands and my rolls. Um, two, that well's there for a reason. And if all them wicks are scraggly about here and everywhere in here, the well will get filled up, but then you're going to have to give it one of those every time that it starts to dry to resaturate those wicks, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's not what I would consider Ideal. the well to be for. No, no. Um, the wick should be in that well ideally. So that's what I've done in here, um, and it's doing quite well. O rings on this seem slightly tighter than they do on the RDA, um, which is a good thing. It's a bit hard to pop body off just using your grip, but even when the O-rings are juiced up, you've still got a nice firm hold, there's a heavy mod, it's fully brass, it's not a light mod at all, and I have, <laughs> I could swing that off it all day and it's not coming off, so it's nice to have something that fits together nice and snug and tight, um, which is wicked, so it's a couple of good points there, and the price, is, it's eight ninety nine from Real Vapes, it's very, very cheap, it's actually the cheapest we've seen it. Yes. Um, and, was kind of eyeing this up for a long time anyway, since it's come out, we've been kind of like, mm -hmm, not sure, not sure, not sure, and there's so much going on that um, we haven't got around to buying one, and, um, Real Vape sent this one down to, to play with, and uh, yeah, I'm not sorry about it. It's actually it's a very very nice. If you're looking for a dual coil dripper, um, it's a very nice one. Yeah, it's it very is. good. Um, there's nothing out there that looks like this apart from the Cyclone, which is the exciting side of say four to five times the price of this. So yeah, there you go. That is what it is. So yeah, for us, we recommend that you give it a go for a touch under a ten. Yeah, to be honest, it's really it, good. if you've used like the DDA and you want to move up to a dual coil device, 
this is where you want to put your money for now. You, you, you want to get there, play with this thing, because let's be honest, even if you buy one of these, you play around and you play around and you play around and like maybe you modify it and you don't like it or you do, you've only got to pay 89 dollars for another one. It, it's a nice bog standard dual cord ripper with no kind of extra bits that are going to go wrong on you. It's three screws, three posts, a top and a base. That's it. I do like the fact that stainless steel as well. It's, it's not something you see super common. They tend to be, even if they are stainless steel, tend to be quite dip, top generally. polish. Even, even, I can't think of any top of my head that is matte, like sort of a, a brush stainless steel. I can't mm. think of any dripper that's a brush stainless steel. And there's no two ways about it. That, the weight of that, that is definitely stainless steel, which I think is wicked for the price. Yeah. We expected sort of a, a look-alike alley. Um, and it's not, it's actually stainless steel, which is awesome stuff. Um, I think if, um, if Smock could come out with their own version of the drip tip that the Cyclone have released as well, um, I think that would be wicked because it would blend really cool, uh, blend really nice, it would look nice on a smaller mod, maybe the K100 because it's got quite a small top on it, yeah, um, I think it's an 18 mm top as well, so maybe something like that which is Or something sweet. like a Bargoire, like a, a 4500 model or something. Yeah, yeah Bargoire maybe look quite nice depending on how big they are, um, in width on the outside. Uh, I do think it's pretty cool, the reason we didn't say that this was a clone of the Cyclone necessarily um, is because barring the body which is a, a lookalike I think we'll call yeah. it, um, the Cyclone it's only got two posts um, from the ones that we've seen in several of these new ones. Don't hold us to it, you know, we get stuff wrong all the time. Um, <laughs> also, doesn't isn't air fed from the bottom and it doesn't have um, as, a well. If not, if it does, it's not as big as that. I can't remember. Sorry, guys, I am so poor. Um, <coughs> so, I like to look like I wouldn't class this necessarily as a, a complete clone because it's not trying to be the cyclone, it just wants to look like it. So, there you go. Um, have we got anything else to go about? No, I think we just say a big thank you all to uh, Real Vapes for sending this down. Um, we've got a few more juices coming next uh, from them, so look forward to trying them out and uh, hopefully you look forward to watching them. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, no, very good site. Go ahead and check them out, guys, because uh, they are this, the drip tips are like three quid and this is like nine quid. It's, it's actually quite a nice site and you've got some decent stuff on there and it's fairly reasonable price. They also do your. Um, you're whipping your camphor and stuff on there as well, so if you wanted to go and get everything you needed, you could do that from there. So go ahead and check them out at least. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. I've been Mr. Proton. This has been The Worm. We'll see, see you soon. soon.